We are drawing closer and closer to the full launch of Modern Warfare 2, which has been marketed as a new era of Call of Duty. So as we move into the new era of the franchise, I wanted to say goodbye to the end of this current era we are in, which ended with Vanguard. I also wanted to say goodbye to Cold War in this video since I never actually did one for the game, but with the power of hindsight, I'm glad I didn't, because going through the whole year of Vanguard made me realise I was wrong about a lot of what I said in regards to Cold War. Now this goodbye video is going to be a little different from my usual ones, where I just talk about my feelings on the game for about 5 minutes or so, then I'll play all my favourite clips from the past year or so, with, obviously with the current game I'm saying goodbye to. Instead, I'm not going to be playing my favourite moments because both years were kind of mid for me, all my previous goodbye videos were very special to me and I wanted to remember my time with those games, however these, this past two years I could easily forget and I wouldn't really be too upset about it. I'm going to be spending a lot more time talking about my feelings on these games and of course we're talking about two games here and comparing and contrasting between the two, so it won't really be a short video either. So just before we start with today's video, if you are hyped for Modern Warfare 2, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be making a ton of videos when the game comes out. Campaign series should already be out or starting to go out by the time you see this video, depending on when it goes out. I'll also be making camo guides, tips and tricks, funny moments and much more when the full game comes out. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you stick around. But with all that out of the way, I'm going to start this video with Cold War since it's kind of overdue. Throughout the year's support for Cold War, I used to make a lot of jokes and comments about how I really didn't like the game and how I thought it was boring to play, which I imagine gave off the impression that I really didn't like the game. However, I did say how the only problem that was really preventing me from having fun was the SBMM in this game and how everyone genuinely felt really sweaty. Now, I just want to say I know that the matchmaking system in place in all the past three COD games technically isn't skill-based matchmaking, it's performance-based, which basically takes your most recent performances and matches and put you with people based on that. So if you've been doing really well, you'll come up against people who have deluded themselves into thinking their win-loss matters. However, if you don't do as well, you'll probably come up against people who use their teeth to aim. But because it's just easier to say, I'm going to call it SBMM throughout this video. Now, the whole matchmaking fiasco with COD has been going on since Malfa 2019 released, and it is apparent even to this day. Now, we don't know if Malfa 2 will have this system in play, but I'd be willing to put money on the fact it will, even if it is loosened up. Now, this matchmaking was definitely felt in Malfair 2019, but I don't think it was anywhere near as bad as Cold War, and my main theory as to why this is the case is because Treyarch are usually the more competitive studio when it comes to COD, and what I mean by that is they like a more streamlined, balanced, and, well, competitive experience, whereas other studios go for more of a sandbox experience where things are a little less balanced and more casual. It sort of feels like with those other games you have more freedom with weapons you want to use, you feel like you can sort of do well with any weapon, and you sort of have the more goofy weapons as well, where with the Treyarch games it's usually, like I said, a more streamlined experience, it's usually more competitive, which I understand is what they go for, and obviously if, if you prefer that experience, you're going to prefer Treyarch games. So the competitive studio making a game with a matchmaking system that people complained about making the game feel too sweaty, well, you can see where I'm going with this. I just want to say I don't have a problem having a more competitive COD experience, like I just said. I like to try hard myself sometimes, but when it becomes almost every single match, and you don't even get rewarded for doing well or winning the game, it really feels pointless just to sweat my nuts off every match. This is why I feel like the SBMM should be loosened up in these COD games, and we should have an MMR-based system in place for a ranked mode. But Mr. Draconic, I hear you scream. You just want to stomp on the newbies. What about the new players who play this game? We need to protect them from neeks like you. Firstly, this was never an issue in COD to begin with. This is just a classic thing where Call of Duty invents a problem and they try and fix that problem even though it was never a thing to begin with. There was already an SBMM system in play and there always has been in COD. So if you were new, you might get steamrolled by some better players but you would end up getting in lobbies where you'd be with similarly skilled players. The point was to get better so you got wrecked less often. Essentially, it was the same system as now, but it wasn't anywhere near as strict. You might end up coming against noobs or pros, but there was a lot more randomness to it. Secondly, if you are a new player and you get a game that has had annual releases for almost 20 years, and a good majority of the player base has stuck around for those annual releases, you should expect to get shagged. 
but there should be an incentive to get better at the game so you can do the shagging at some point. Instead, the newer players these days are just being brainwashed into thinking they're getting better when in reality, they just come up against worse enemies more often. Eventually though, they are going to get better and as their skill increases, so will the skill based matchmaking. So they always do the same and they might even feel like they're getting better at the game. They might just think they've hit a wall when in reality, they are getting better at the game. At some point, these newer players that you lot are trying to protect are going to become the sweaty neeks that you're arguing against people like me you know in like three years time they're going to be really good at this game they're going to be feeling the same problems that we are at the moment overall i just think this is a very manipulative system that i hate it really streamlines the experience and it makes every game feel the same and that is without a doubt my main problem with cold war beyond that however i think this game is solid and i really think that this game was designed really well it was very fleshed out and although it did have a slight idea identity crisis they had a solid idea for the direction of the game at least so if i'm saying all this and i'm praising the game as much as i am why did i dislike cold war so much in the main year of support now we just got done talking about my main problem with black ops cold war and that was the sbmm this really got in the way of my enjoyment when you're coming against cdl sweats who try their nuts off every single game and you just can't get a break you can't just you know do well for yourself and you can't just have a relaxed game it really gets tiring to play. And I know I use the analogy a lot where I say it's like playing a CDL tournament, but that is genuinely what it felt like. I mean, the amount of memes that were going around of, of Black Ops Cold War of people just try-harding, it was just apparent that this was a really sweaty game. It would make sense if there was, like I said before, some kind of league play or competitive mode, which was eventually added, but... I don't think it was popular at all, to be honest. I think people would rather just play casual. But this was definitely the main thing that got in the way of my enjoyment of this game. Um, I just wanted to chill and just play this game. But when every match you come up against sweaty people, it's kind of like Rainbow Six Siege at the moment. I play, I've been playing that game quite a lot lately. I think Siege at the moment uh, definitely is not as good as it used to be. But that's beyond the point. You can still have fun in that game as long as you don't have sweaty people against you. But if you have people who are just like, you know, diamond level, just extremely good at the game, and you can't just sort of, you know, chill, piss around, have fun with your mates, it really is tiring to play. And that's pretty much my experience of Cold War. I guess it was my experience of Cold War. Now, my second and only biggest complaint alongside skill-based matchmaking was the score streak system. This was absolutely horrible. I don't like the fact that you have to charge up your kill streaks throughout the entire game. Um, I just think, once again, they tried to invent a problem that was never there. And I guess I appreciate the innovation, sort of like Infinity War with their perk packages. But I just don't really see the point. It doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really help anyone. This system at least made more sense to the perk packages. This system... I guess it helps people sort of everyone get their kill streaks, but it just wasn't a good system. Once again, invented a problem that wasn't there. I just don't like this system at all. And I think, to be honest, I was being ungrateful with my Call of Duty games. I mean, Vanguard has really taught me that things can get a lot worse. I think those two main issues, yeah, they did hurt my enjoyment of the game, but I think I overreacted quite a lot about how bad cold war really was because i don't think it was even that bad but ever since playing vanguard like i said it's taught me it can get a lot worse and i should appreciate what i have first world problems am i right i mean there's people dying in africa and i'm sat here complaining about a call of duty game but like i said first world problems and also my just blind hatred for the sbmm and uh, score streak system didn't make me see how many positives there were to this game i'm not gonna sit here and list them all if you want to see my review on cold war that's up on the channel it's been now for about a year or so you can find it in the cold war place down below um but i think my blind hatred for these two mechanics just didn't make me see how many good things there actually were in this game and I just wanted to hate on the game, which I don't like to do. I don't like to be that person who just hops on the bandwagon of hate in a game. Um, but I did become that in Cold War. And I, it's kind of embarrassing, to be honest, because it wasn't even that bad of a game. I have been playing a bit of Cold War lately here and there. And it, it has made me realise that the game is a lot better than I remembered it being. This game only really had a couple big issues for me that we did just get done talking about. And that could have easily been fixed or changed to make the game more fun for me. And to say that the game really only had a couple things wrong with it is a very positive thing. Compared to something on Marvel 2019 where there is a list as long as the Black Man's Willy with things wrong with that game. 
Vanguard taught me to be grateful for what is good in a COD game and not let a small amount of issues ruin my enjoyment. So I've been mentioning how Vanguard showed me the light with Cold War and I guess you could even go as far as say that it taught me a valuable life lesson about being grateful with what you have and not what you lack. But let's talk about how Vanguard taught me that lesson. I think the best way to start this segment is to go back to when leaks first started coming out for Vanguard. And the first thing we learned was that Sledgehammer were making another World War II game, which I think not only myself, but almost the whole community didn't want. And it quickly squandered all hype for the next game. However, over the time between that initial piece of information and the launch of the game, we were getting a lot of good news about this game's development. Things like it was in the Modern Warfare engine. There was a whole 16 maps at launch. They talked about significant post-launch support. <laughs> <laughs> and they also talked about how they learned a lot over the past few years and how they wanted to create a seamless experience across Vanguard and Warzone. I would love to talk about the whole Caldera Warzone thing, but I'm going to save that for Goodbye Warzone because I'm definitely going to be making that video. So it all sounded great leading up to the launch of the game. I had pretty high expectations. I was looking forward to getting that sweet, sweet mastery camo and making a ton of content for you guys here on YouTube. And truth be told, I was hoping to grow lots during this game's life cycle, and all in all, I had big plans for the game. Then my PC died just a couple weeks after launch. Luckily, around this time, I had just started a new job, which meant I could save up money quickly and buy a new PC. However, not being able to record videos on this game, like Gold Gun Guides and all the other things I had planned, really set the mood for this year. Before my PC died, I was really hyping up Vanguard, saying how much I enjoyed the game and how much potential I thought it had. But the fact all my plans for videos were put on hold for a good three to four weeks after the launch, it made me kind of give up on my prospects, especially because by then everyone had turned on the game. So even if I wanted to make a triumphant return, I felt no one would want to watch the videos I made anyway. I remember watching creators like Jev and Exclusive Ace, and they would talk about how bad Vanguard did on YouTube and how the popularity of the game plummeted in the small amount of time I was gone. Therefore, I gave up on my plans for the launch of this game, and ever since then, I was always lagging behind. I always wonder how this game's launch would have gone if my PC didn't die, or if I got a new one before the game came out, but I think this year, to be honest, was just destined to fail either way, so maybe it was just for the better that it happened this way. I suppose the best way to look at it is that if the game was destined to fail, at least I didn't waste a load of time making videos at the start of the game that people most likely wouldn't be interested in. I guess that's... A silver lining in this whole situation. Despite this, from then onwards, Vanguard went from a promising looking game and possibly a good comeback from Sledgehammer, making two subpar COD games before this, to the laughing stock of the franchise. Season 1 wasn't too bad. I remember they added Dome, which was nice, but nothing really felt captivating to me. It was kind of like the same stuff you expect from a season in a COD game. New maps, new guns, new modes, and a crappy battle pass. Nothing really interesting was ever added in these seasons, and on top of that, every season saw less and less content for the multiplayer of this game, and I really think that's because Activision knew that it would be a waste of resources adding more content into a dead game, so they pulled the funding they most likely already had planned for this game, and probably put it into Modern Warfare 2 or elsewhere, maybe Treyarch's game in 2024, we don't know. And I think the rest of this game's life cycle you guys can infer, it is genuinely hard to try and remember the life cycle of Vanguard because there was no life in there. Popularity is most likely the lowest point ever been for COD, maybe apart from like, I don't know, Call of Duty Finest Hour or some shit. Every season sort of blended into one big mess of a year, and although I do appreciate the fact they did go balls to the wall after like season 3 and just do wacky crossover skins like Terminators, Godzilla, anime and much more, I think this is part of the whole identity crisis this game severely suffers from. But I could just see in those boardrooms somewhere, someone probably saying something like, Look guys, Vanguard isn't doing very well. The World War II time period clearly isn't very popular. So fuck it. Let's throw in Snoop Dogg, King Kong, and a laser gun. That should bring some people back. If you guys have seen my Vanguard review video, you will know that I don't think this game is terrible. It's not by amazing by any means, but I don't think it's even bottom three for COD games. By the way, if you haven't seen my Vanguard review, go check that out. It's a lot more of a critical review on the game. This video is just all my thoughts and feelings. The problem with this game is player retention. They did a horrible job at keeping people's interest throughout the year, and playing this game was genuinely mind-numbing for me. Like I said before, it's not a bad game in design, even though it's not perfect. 
but there isn't enough substance to the game to keep me coming back. There's no grind beyond atomic, there's no fun and unique weapons, there's no 100% calling cards, there's just nothing. Hopefully you guys can see now why I feel like Vanguard has changed my perception of Cold War. This year of Vanguard has been a damaging one to the franchise. However, even the rumours and leaks from Modern Warfare 2 have been doing a better job at keeping people's interest in the franchise than Vanguard did. But that is all I have to say today. Hopefully you'll join me in saying goodbye to this era of Call of Duty and welcome to the next one. And as we always do with these videos, it's time to say goodbye and let the past die.